Okay, so we're talking about infinite limits, and what we want to do is you know, find places where um, rational functions have infinite limits, equivalently find vertical asymptotes of rational functions. So if you have a rational function that's of the form p of x divided by q of x for p and q polynomials, we know that the only places where vertical asymptotes could occur are places where the denominator is zero. So the only potential places for vertical asymptotes are places where the denominator is zero. So like if uh, q of a is not is equal to zero, by the limit laws, the limit as x approaches a of r of x is the limit as x approaches a of p of x divided by q of x. And because the limit of the denominator is not zero, I can just plug in by our limit laws. So this is just p of a divided by q of a. And this is this makes sense because we're not dividing by zero. If p of a is zero, we get zero. If otherwise, we just get this fraction. In particular, this is a finite number. So this limit exists, which means that there's no um, vertical asymptote at x is equal to a. So the only places where they are potential places for vertical asymptotes are at places where the denominator is zero. So we only need to worry about places where the denominator q of x is zero. However, just because the denominator is zero does not a vertical asymptote make. Just because a rational function is not defined at a number does not mean it has an asymptote there. So just because uh, q of x is equal to zero, well, let's say q of a. So there's some number, so if you plug it into q, you get zero. This does not, this does not imply um, x is equal to a is a vertical asymptote. We've actually seen this before. Um, so, for example, let's say um, x squared minus 2x plus 1 divided by x squared minus 1. So here's r of x. The denominator here is x squared minus 1. So the denominator is x squared minus 1. And this is equal to 0 when x is plus or minus 1. But um, x is equal to 1 is not a vertical asymptote. It has a hole at x is equal to 1. So why is that? Well, if there were a vertical asymptote, the limit as x approaches 1 of r of x would be plus or minus infinity from one side or the other, but there's a finite limit as x approaches 1, right? As x approaches 1, the limit as x approaches 1 of r of x is this, and I can factor the numerator and denominator. This is x minus 1, the quantity squared, and this is x plus 1 times x minus 1. And I can cancel a factor of x minus 1 for the numerator and denominator. And then as x approaches 1, we get 0 over 2, which is 0. So we have a finite limit as x approaches 1, even though there's a hole at x equals 1, 
So there's not a vertical asymptote there. So places where the denominator is zero are potential places for vertical asymptotes, but they do not have to be vertical asymptotes. But to determine where the vertical asymptotes are, you basically just use this idea. You're going to take your rational function, factor the numerator and denominator, cancel like terms, and then places where the denominator is zero and the numerator is not um, are the vertical asymptotes. So the process. finding vertical asymptotes. rational functions is you want to factor the numerator and denominator completely and cancel like terms. And then once you're done with this, if there are places where the, new, where the denominator is zero and the numerator is not, those will be vertical asymptotes. So values x. So the, the new denominator, once you've canceled like terms, will be vertical asymptotes, basically by the limit laws, because you take the limit of the function as x gets close to this value, then the denominator is going to zero and the numerator is not once you factor and cancel. And so the limit can't be finite, so you have to have a vertical asymptote. And again, if you want to figure out exactly how this works, you have to look at the one-sided limits and think about the signs.